right? Outside, because I'm covering the outside of arms, simple enough. Inside, because I'm covering the inside of arms, it depends on the attack. It just depends on the attack. If, if he just goes with the tradition of a basic beginner Wing Chun and he just does Tanda, Show Tanda. All right. This a lot of times can work as an inside bracing because let's say someone like me is off the street and I'm like this and I'm swinging wide. I'm going to be able to attack and cover at the same time. That is what he's doing. Attack and cover at the same time. He did the turns out according to the fact, not because it has to be low or high, but because he feared for where it was going to hit. Uh, that's another reason why I like doing this turns out. It's not the turns out way up here like William, like the William Chung method. It's not the turns out down here like we do in Moyak. It's right in the middle. The, the butt of the hand is at the chin and it's out. You can touch your nose with it. That's how the measurement goes. That's my tonsil. That's the tonsil I got actually from Hungar first. Then I became a Wing Chun man. That's the tonsil I respect. Because I've been on the street. See, a lot of y'all Wing Chun people ain't been in the street. Y'all ain't had to kick it with Crips and Bloods and then get kicked by Crips and Bloods. You have to understand where my life was at that time. I wasn't Cripping and Bleeding. <laughs> Cripping and Bleeding. I wasn't in that, but I had to know how to use my skill to defend myself, right? Sometimes it's that kind of conditions that change you. That makes you who you are. Just saying. Bruce Lee is a big expression of that. He was a gang member his dang self. Anyway, so if I'm if I'm coming across and I'm doing like this, he has that technique there. He's attacking me here. He has that cover. Because I'm trying to do this. It also works if... Maybe even if I was front kicking, that'd be better. Thank you. Thank you, brain. If I was front kicking, he can, and especially if I'm kicking with my right leg, for example, he's going to toss out. He can toss out here if I front kick, try to kick high, come from the middle, come out, be able to punch. Come from the middle, come out, punch. So if I'm doing like this, there. And there's a lapse in time. No, it's not your fault. It's a lapse in time because you're talking about kicking now. You can kind of relax on the turn and punch at the same time when it comes to that. You can actually relax when there's outside techniques. For example, okay, if I was to do this, there goes this turn side right here. Does it say that I have to, he has to attack at that moment? No. He has myself pretty well protected. Well, he's not tossed out. He's viewing. Anyway, pick one. <laughs> anyway, so if he's tossed out right here or whatever, he doesn't have to hit at the same time at this point because of the fact of right now he's not at a threat. Right here, when he when I was swinging like this, he's more of a threat because I have my other hand. I can just fight him like this, right? If I have him like this, I can punch him through there, but it's going to be hard for me to do it. He's at chunk Q neutral. He's protected. I may have to spin. I may decide to do this, and then he has me same time. No matter what I do for my outside, it won't matter now because of timing. It's all about timing. Could he turn down and punch at the same time? Yes, he could if he's on the outside bracing. So if he was right here, for example, he could be hitting me towards the head right here. Or he could decide to hit me towards the body if he felt like that was too high. Right? He can even decide that if he wants to, he can use one of the arms to take my arm down and then attack me at neck or whatever he wants to do. But mind you, he has more of an option not to do Tonda 
at the same time or if some saw hand and die at the same time, he, he, he has more options when it's outside than anything else. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, if I'm right here, kind of works a little bit different. It just kind of does. Why? Because, okay, when I was here and I did this, I had two arms that's really fast enough that could hit if I needed to. G Kun Dowers loved that view, view G. <laughs> That's why he does it so much. That's why I said pick one for habit. It's a force of habit. <laughs> so, so, when you're doing like spin kicks, realize that that spin kick, he's covering, he's not having, he doesn't, he can't. There's times where he can strike and strike and cover at the same time, and there's other times he, other times he may have to wait because of this. This is being the middle of my back. This is not the same side as this is not the same thing as inside bracing. If anything, if I do a spin kick, I'm more doing outside and in, or I'm giving him the option of doing more outside and outside and in. If I'm doing this, there. And he can just decide to move to kick. He can decide to move to kick my back, or he can cover that technique, lower that leg down, and attack. Right? It's different. Realize when we talk about inside outside bracing, we're mostly talking about the hands. The feet, we can kind of finagle around that. Pick up a knee, tonsil, double gonsal, double quonsal. We can kind of finagle around that. Does that make sense? Now, but the whole goal of this video, really, or the question was bracing stance, right? Mm -hmm. If he's doing tanda and I'm just like this, you see that? I lost balance. Here, he has this, he has that. He has that tongue out. I try to push more towards him, it's not working. My body's losing it before he does. That's where the brace comes. Would that be outside bracing? That's outside. That's outside. Now, now, here's the big question. What about inside bracing? Be honest. Inside to brace, listen to what I'm about to say. Inside to brace should never even happen. Because if we're punching and covering at the same time, we ain't got to brace a damn. Did you hear what I just said? We're more about that speed and technique. If we have to deal with the inside of him and opponent, we got to be on our technical shit. So would inside bracing be considered kind of like an emergency maneuver? Inside bracing wouldn't be exactly an emergency maneuver so much as it is just understanding that you just need a strong stance. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, let me show y'all something. Without time dying, we're just going to have this. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hit, but watch what I'm saying. Focus on that lowered elbow. And this hand, don't let it, do not put it in a position where it has to recover. It better stay like this. Now, if I'm doing this hook punch, his feet are both together, kind of, sort of, but notice how hard it was to move from back. It was a brace. You get what I'm saying? If he decides to step one foot out, and he focuses on the fact that that foot should not move, this elbow needs to stay at point, and he needs to keep looking at this mirror to make sure his hair is pretty. Right? See how hard that is? And I'm not, I'm not using my whole strength, but I am using my body, I'm carrying that weight. Right? And I'm kind of like dead point throwing my weight. 
But look at what's going on. He's If he didn't have that focus in his legs, relaxing, but he kept the tons out, he just didn't have the focus in his legs. There's more of a pushback there than it was before. But there's but look, he focused on that tons out. So you already know now that good technique with a brace equals results. Not one half, whatever, both. Without both of those, all that would be crumbled, he would have been hit in the face. That's why how my students say, focus. Focus on that elbow. Focus where it won't close. Keep your, keep your mirror out here. Make sure you still look pretty. Where did I get that? Lady looks in the mirror. Look up that technique in Hungar and see what that Tan Sal or Tan Q looks like. Q means bridge. Mm -hmm. Q, we won't say that until Chung Q, then we realize we're not just making Tan Sal and all of that, we're making bridges. We are the offshoot second cousin, kind of, sort of, of Hung guard. You know, Hung guard, that's kind of like the parental form of Southern Shaolin. That's the parental system. So if you if you look if you look it up, then come back and tell me if my tongue sounds wrong. <laughs> because hey, I was with May taught Fong Wing Chun first, who married Hong Hei Gung before she met Yin Wing Chun and taught her the system that we know of today. Time lapse, time lapse. And actually, if we really want to get serious, if you want to know how much of a time lapse, probably well between 20 years or so, if you look at the story of Fong Sai Yuk and how he died. Because how did Fong Sai Yuk die? He more killed him, Wu Mei killed him. Wu Mei killed him on accident. Yeah, unintentionally. On accident. She told him about that playing around, and he she always loved to play around with the masters to learn something new, and it came at a cost. She hit him right dead in the heart. He died with a palm, a Jing palm, to be exact. Talking about Jing Jun? Jing Jun. <laughs> yes. And that would be his brace right there. So if I try, if lowering the elbow just a tiny bit, if I try to move him like that, I can't. He ain't moving. That's the brace. It's kind of like an anchor. It's an anchor. Just like the elbow. Aha! Connection. Outside. So you may have a tongue side right here. I may do something simple as back fisting right here. He could do a turn dot to my back if he wants to. Go ahead. But you don't have to even have to step. Just, just bring out that palm or bring out whatever hand you want. But my, my arms would have been too short, I wouldn't have been able to reach it. That's okay. okay. It's just for show. Okay. Make it right, y'all. It's just for show. <laughs> for right now. Good. Which, by the way, last part, last thing I'm going to put in there before we kill this video. If you're ever worried about keeping the control of somebody's back, this palm and right here told you from the wooden dummy why this existed. You keep the back here. You keep the back. Mm -hmm. So they can attack with where their power really lies is from the front of them. So if it, it was this, if I threw a kick or anything else, he's protected. He sees all, knows all, there before, and that sense of fighting becomes omnipotent. Omnipotent and omniscient. That's the dragon, eh? That's not even just a dragon, that's God. Same difference. So, Realize that. So my goal is in Kung Fu is to make sure 
you walk into the level of a God. I don't, it's not about me. I'm a human being passing the torch. My time will come. My time will end. That's how it man told the Wong Shun Lung and everybody else. All the great Kung Fu masters are like, our time is coming to an end. The new generation must hold up the flag or the burden that this system carries. That is power. I'm giving power. So something happens and he does run across somebody who does spins or whatever. He got him. 